traditional Mother's Day cards won't cut it for these animals. Some of these animal parents go above and beyond to care for their young ones. From the octopus that guarded her eggs for more than four years, to the otter who cares for her pups all by herself. Welcome back to Forever Green. Today, we're looking at some of the best parents in the animal kingdom. Before we dive in, we've got a question for you. Which of these animal moms tends to their babies well into their teen years? Is it the orangutan, the blue whale, or the giraffe? Put your guesses in the comments below and watch the video to find out. All right, let's dive in. Number 10, pandas. With its distinctive black and white coat, the panda is adored by the world and is considered a national treasure in China. These bears are excellent tree climbers despite their bulk. They live mainly in temperate forests high in southwest China's mountains, where they live almost entirely on bamboo. They must eat around 26 to 84 pounds of it per day. A newborn panda is about the size of a stick of butter, about 1 900th the size of its mother. Aside from marsupials, pandas have the largest offspring to parent ratio. Newborns weigh 3 to 5 ounces, while mom weighs in at roughly 300 pounds. They are born blind too, so they really are pretty helpless and need to remain in their mother's care at all times. Panda mothers are seen cradling their cubs almost constantly. For example, a panda in the Smithsonian National Zoo called Mei Zhang gave birth to a healthy little cub and was so protective of her that she wouldn't allow the zookeepers to examine the baby. She would position her body in her cub so that panda keepers couldn't reach the cub. When they would attempt to distract her and retrieve the cub, she would persistently move out of reach. It's clear that she was holding tight to the cub and did not want to give it up. The keepers stopped the attempt so as not to upset her. Regular checkups are just to ensure the cub is growing up healthy, but of course, the mother panda doesn't know that, so she protects the cub with everything she's got. They did finally get to examine the cub when Mi Xiang left the den. Number 9. Meerkats Commonly found in open habitats with little woody vegetation, meerkats are native to southeast Botswana, Namibia, and northern and western South Africa. They are social mammals, forming packs of 2 to 30 individuals, each comprising equal numbers of either sex and multiple family units of pairs and their kids. Members of the pack take turns at jobs, such as looking after pups and keeping a lookout for predators. Also in their job description, tutor. Venomous scorpions are the primary food source for meerkats, but it takes a while to learn how to handle the dangerous prey. That's why moms and other family members are patient tutors to their pups, showing them how to deal with the arachnids carefully. Though meerkats, like mongooses, are immune to venom, little ones can still get injured by the stingers. Also, certain deadly species of scorpion, like a cape scorpion or granulated scorpion, can inflict enough damage to a meerkat to cause death. So, the adults provide little pups with training, which happens in stages. At first, pups are simply given dead scorpions. Later on, they get ones with the stingers broken off. Eventually, the pups will be handed a disabled scorpion, stinger and all. Finally, as they approach the age at which they're able to go out on their own, an adult may toss a young meerkat a live scorpion. It's basically sink or swim at that point. The pups are taught to move in quickly when they spy a scorpion. The scorpion may be aware that a meerkat is close by, but they seize the arachnid so fast that it has no time to respond or defend itself. The meerkat will first bite off the scorpion's stinger and discard it, so it can't get injected with venom. Then, the meerkat will brush off any remaining traces of venom from the exoskeleton in the sand before eating it. Like any good teacher, the adult meerkats also monitor the pup after they provide it with the food. If the pup is reluctant to handle the prey, the older meerkat will nudge the prey towards them to encourage them. Additionally, if the prey wanders off, the adult retrieves it and returns it to the pup, sometimes further disabling it before returning it to the young meerkat. Before we take a look at the next one, we've got a quick challenge for you that will take you just 5 seconds. Go ahead and subscribe to the Forever Green channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload and you'll get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it works. Done that? Great. Number eight, sea otters. Parenting is a full-time job, whether you're human or an animal. But if you're an otter, it's definitely more challenging. I mean, just imagine having one baby every year until the day you die. Such is the life of sea otter mothers. Not only do they give birth on average to one pup each year, but they will have and rear pups into their senior years. Along with mothering multiple pups throughout their lifetimes, sea otter moms do it single-handedly. 
That's because male sea otters often have multiple female partners, and as a result, they mate with numerous females and bear offspring with each. On top of that, they don't even stick around to raise the kids. That makes mother otters the ultimate single mothers. No child support and no help with pup rearing from dad. After courtship and mating, males are pretty much out of the picture, and mom becomes the sole provider. But the work doesn't stop there. She's just getting started. Sea otters nurse their young for six to eight months. When the pup is just a few weeks old, she will share her prey and teach her pup what's good to eat and how to eat it. As any parent can relate, these months of dependency can be physically taxing, and sea otter moms will be pushed to their survival limits by the time their pup becomes independent. Her reproductive cycle replays every year. Pregnancy, birth, pup rearing, weaning, pregnant again, all the way until her death. Sea otter moms give it their all to launch successful independent sea otters into the world. So, next time you see a wild sea otter, think of the mothers. Rather than approaching that single mom for a selfie, we suggest appreciating all that she is and does from afar. And if you see one of them napping, they definitely earned it. So, be sure not to disturb her. Number 7. Dolphins Fun fact. A group of dolphins is called a pod. Dolphins live in ponds that can number a dozen or more, and they are intensely social animals that communicate with squeaks, clicks, and whistles. Whether or not they have a language like humans is still a topic up for debate. They are mammals and therefore have warm blood and nurse their young. Dolphins have more than one mate and generally produce a single offspring that will stay with the mother for up to six years, depending on the species. Dolphins are speedy swimmers, and their calves need to keep up with that right from birth. To help with that, bottlenose dolphin moms create a safe passageway for their babies by creating a wake that effortlessly draws the youngsters alongside their moms. But sometimes the babies lose their way, and if that's the case, the mom sends out a signature whistle, kind of like calling a name. Individual vocal signatures play an important role in any parent offspring recognition in many animals, and studies have proven that one species that uses signature calls to allow recognition is the bottlenose dolphin. Female dolphins and their calves will use their highly individualized signature whistles to identify and create contact with one another. Previous studies have shown high signature whistle rates of both mothers and calves during forced separations. In a more natural setting, it's the calf that calls out more to its mother. Number six whales. Whales, like dolphins, are mammals. They breathe air, give birth to live young, and are warm-blooded. They also have the biggest hearts on the planet, 400 pounds to be exact. So, it's no surprise that whale mothers are big-hearted. Sperm whales, for example, nurse their young for over two years, which is quite a commitment in the animal kingdom. Whales of many species also fiercely defend their calves, especially against other predatory whales. In 2018, scientists off the coast of California captured footage of a gray whale defending her calf from a pod of orcas. The mother held her baby on her back and used her tail to fight while the orcas attacked. She then took her calf and swam quickly to the beach shoreline and saved the baby. The calf was battered in the hour-long battle but survived. Gray whales typically retreat to shallower waters to escape from killer whales, which prefer the deep seas. Number 5. Spiders it might seem like spiders have very few redeeming qualities, including eating the bugs we hate so much and making silk that is sturdy enough to be used by the military. But they have many more excellent qualities, and one of them is being a great parent. Maternal care isn't completely void in spiders, but they can be pretty rare. Some mother spiders, particularly wolf spiders, are much more involved in their offspring's lives and much more protective over their young. A mother spider does one of several things once her eggs are laid. Some spiders will carry their egg sacs behind them, dragging them along with a short strand of silk. Wolf spiders also mend defects in the egg sacs, and some sun their egg sacs in sunlight. Web-building spiders will suspend their egg sacs somewhere in the web and stay in guard all hours of the day. Other spiders may lay out sheets of silk to protect their fragile egg cases. Just before hatching, a mother wolf spider will puncture the egg sac to help the immature spiders crawl out. Some mother spiders even help their babies drink water leaving a few legs in the water source to allow the immature spiderlings to climb down. Sometimes, once the spiderlings hatch, the mother will carry them around on her back until they're ready to be on their own. Sadly, the babies don't reciprocate that love sometimes. Once the eggs hatch, the mother produces a nourishing fluid, which they feed the spiderlings by mouth. Eventually, the mother starts to liquefy and will use up almost all of her resources. When she is nearly depleted, the baby spiders will crawl onto her and start eating her. This act is called metrophagy, 
and it definitely uncommon in the animal world, but common with some species of spiders. Guess it's not all sunshine and rainbows and mother-child relationships in the wild. Number 4. Crocodiles Despite their fearsome natures, crocs and alligators make very gentle parents. Crocodiles bury their eggs in riverside nests that they construct from mud, sticks, and plants. Then they wait nearby for three months, protecting their eggs from predators and any other dangers. The decomposing plants keep the nest warm, since the sex of the developing babies is determined by temperature. This is very important. At a temperature of 86 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, the babies will all be female. At 93 degrees or higher, they will all be male. At temperatures in between, there will be a mix of males and females. The mother alligator senses this and may add or remove nesting material to maintain a temperature that will produce babies of both sexes. Even before they hatch, the babies begin to vocalize, which helps the mother know that the babies will emerge soon. She will open up the nest, gently pick up the hatchlings in her mouth, and carry them to the water. Shaking her head from side to side encourages the babies to swim out. If there are eggs that haven't hatched, she will roll them in her mouth to help them open. Baby alligators stay together in a group close to their mother for one to two years. When they feel threatened, they will call their mom, and she will rush to help them. So, don't mess with these creatures once they hatch. The mother crocodile is a ferocious guardian. Number 3. Octopuses Octopuses comprise of 300 species across the board, and you'll find them in all regions of the ocean, from coral reefs to the pelagic zone, from the seashore to the deep dark waters of the abyssopelagic zone. An invertebrate might not be the very first thing to pop into your mind when we say, best animal parents, but you'll see what we mean when we say that the octopus is in a league of its own. After female octopuses lay huge amounts of eggs, sometimes in the thousands, they fan them, which keeps the developing babies oxygenated and free of harmful bacteria. And the entire time they're doing that, they don't eat or leave their eggs. The record set for a mother octopus watching over her eggs is four and a half years. And throughout her time guarding her eggs, she kept them clean and safe from predators. Shallow water species don't usually brood for such a long time. It's generally only for a few months until the egg hatches and the mother dies. But the rules are a little different as you go deeper into the ocean. It gets colder, darker, and more dangerous. So there is an advantage to having babies that hatch much later and come out better developed to cope with the harsh conditions of the deep sea. The cost of that, however, is that the octopus endures a much longer brooding period. During her vigil, the researchers monitoring her noticed that her once textured purple skin had turned pale white. The mother octopus lost muscle tone and developed cloudy eyes too a sign of rapid aging that precedes natural death. Throughout their diving missions, they never saw the female leave her eggs or eat. The animal may have stayed alive thanks to slow metabolism because of the cold water. Once the researchers even tried to offer the octopus a piece of crab to see if she would eat it, and she would not. The last time the crew saw her was in September 2011. The egg casings were tattered, showing that the babies had emerged successfully, but the mother was gone. It is now time to check out today's subscriber pick. Remember, if you ever come across some bizarre or fascinating image, you can send it to us and we'll investigate. Today's image seems to be of a mother-baby hippo pair. Check out our number two spot. Number two, hippos. Hippos are one of the most ferocious animals in Africa, but they're basically pudding for their babies. Hippo mothers nurse and care for their offspring for 18 long months. Since the female hippo mates only once every other year, she has plenty of time to devote to her calf. And, as the only calf to bask in his mother's attention, the bond between them is strong, shown by displays of affection, mutual grooming, nuzzling, and cuddling together. Aww. Their bond is so close, in fact, that in Kasein, Botswana, a mother defended the body of her dead baby from photographers and zookeepers. She stood motionless over the body and howled in absolute anguish before it turned to rage and she started bellowing at other animals and baring her teeth. The male hippos also play a role in caring for the calf, acting as a fierce protector against predators like hyenas, lions, and crocodiles. Hippos are such great parents that sometimes they even help out other species. All right, at the beginning of the video, we asked you which animal mom tends to their babies well into their teen years. We hope you put your guesses down in the comments. The answer, of course, is the orangutan. Did you guess correctly? Let us know in the comments below. And now, number one, orangutans. Along with chimps, gorillas, and humans, 
orangutans are members of the great ape family, or the hominidae, if you want to be scientific about it. And while all members of this group invest a lot of time and energy into raising their kids, orangutans are perhaps the most impressive. Yep, even more impressive than humans. For starters, orangutans have a long gestation period that is nearly as long as that of humans. Most females remain pregnant for about eight months before giving birth to a single offspring. The mother will carry her new offspring almost constantly in the following months to ensure that the little one doesn't get separated or wind up being eaten by a predator. She'll feed, groom, and care for her baby for a very long time. Some of them will care for their offspring, including breastfeeding it, for up to eight years of age. And even when the young one starts climbing on its own, starts grooming itself, and figures out how to pick its own food, it will still stick around its mother well into its teen years. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and check out more videos on nature and animals on the 4 Evergreen channel. We'll be back soon with another video. But until then, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.